Shalom and greetings from Jerusalem. Nick Vanderlaan here. Today is the 25th day of the sixth month on Elohim's Zadok Priest Enoch Solar Calendar. It's September 12th, 2018. This video is being broadcasted from Jerusalem, Israel. This video is a Yom Kippur slash Yom Teruah Resurrection Rapture from September 19th, 2018. So finding the Resurrection Rapture Day has been a process of elimination since we've seen the September 23rd, 24th sign. We are called to patiently watch, which consists of seeking Elohim and searching His scriptures. The process is an edifying process, keeping us sharp and attentive so He won't find us asleep when He comes. I've never claimed any dates for certain as I don't have a full understanding. My understanding is an understanding in progress, like all of us. The only people I believe who know the dates and the unfolding of the events are Daniel and John, who are given the time period prophecies regarding the coming 70th week. And I believe these are going to be the two sons of fresh oil, or what we would call the two witnesses, and right now, just was thinking about it earlier today, that they're probably going to be in their hundreds uh, when they arrive or when they awake from their sleep. You can watch my videos on the two witnesses. I've put about three or four videos in the last uh, couple of months on them. Um, and it's been a progressive understanding of more and more information has come forward on that. There's been uh, much truth uh, of Elohim's truth revealed uh, through my channel. All praise to Yah. Hallelujah. He's totally blessed us. Uh, just as ironing has sharpened iron uh, in the comments sections, guys. I've been so blessed. And all praise to Yah for all the things that he's revealed to me while I've been here. Uh, and that I've been sharing with you regarding his calendar and his times and his seasons. These uh, anniversaries that we talked about, the Elohim documents, they are all memorials and bring him glory and praise. So praise the Father and the Son. Hallelujah. All praise to them. So we're trying to home in or hone in on that day. Okay, again, these are all possibilities. We aren't, I am not, or setting anything as certain. So these aren't date settings. We are date watching. And it's a process of elimination, as I said. Yeshua instructed us to do it. It's a progressive understanding, as I said, um, that it's gonna, the light shines more and more into that perfect day. So as we get closer, it says right here in Hebrews 10, 25, that same comp, concept as you see the day approaching guys so it's going to get more and more clear as we see this day approaching daniel said at the end uh knowledge shall it be increased it's a process of elimination uh, as i said uh, we have all the tools the pieces of the puzzle we have elohim's authentic zadok priest enoch solar calendar that was found in qumran also you can find it in the scriptures in the book of Enoch and other scriptures. We have the scriptures, Western, Eastern, and non-canon books. We have the spirit of truth, and we, we have the body of Messiah. So in a couple of my videos, you're probably wondering why, why do I have this as a Yom Teru, a Yom Teru, a Yom Kippur, or Yom Kippur, Yom Teru, a rapture. Well, back here in this video that I did, I want to say uh, many months ago, uh, when Jared Kushner spoke at the U.S. Embassy opening here in Jerusalem, he signaled something, and I looked on my calendar, and it was interesting that this year, this calendar year, that uh, the Jewish Hillel, Yom Kippur, is on Yahweh's Zadok Priest, Enoch, solar calendar day of Yom Teruah. There's a 10-day difference, and I've talked about this 10-day difference before. Back in May, I put this video together that 100% proof all lunar month calendars are false. So in that, in that video, I used a couple of scriptures. I'll share them with you real quick. And Elohim appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days and for Sabbaths and for months and for feasts and for years and for Sabbath of years and for jubilees and for all seasons of the years. So how can the sun be a great sign on the earth? It's a great sign on the earth when it casts a shadow. And, uh, and that shadow is the spring equinox. And we can test the spring equinox uh, twofold by measuring it over the horizon as it comes over the eastern horizon and rises and sets. But the other way is the shadow that comes upon the earth that you can capture at solar noon, okay, um, on the day of the equinox. And this sign can be seen anywhere on earth on the same day, no matter your location.
So that is the great sign. It's the equinox. It's the spring equinox. And here we know that more proof that lunar calendars are false for everybody that are new, is new to my channel. In Jubilee 632 uh, to 38, it said uh, it talks about here. You guys can pause it and read it for yourself. But it talks about commanding the children of Israel to absorb the reckoning of the calendar 364 days. Um, and these will constitute a complete year, but and they will not disturb its time for its days and for its feasts. So the feasts won't get disturbed, guys, in a 364-day year, but everything will fall uh, out of them and according to their testimony. So they'll all come in place and will not leave any day uh, disturb any, nor disturb any feasts. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to this commandment, then they will disturb all their seasons and their years will be dislodged from this order. And they, the children of Israel, will disturb the seasons and years and will be dislodged. And they will neglect their ordinances. So they won't do what they're supposed to do on these days. And they will, and all the children of Israel will forget and not find the path of the years. And will forget the new months. New months, there's no such thing as new moon. Should be new months and seasons and Sabbaths. And they will go wrong as to all order of the years. For I know... And from henceforth will I declare it unto thee, and it is not of my own devising, for the book lies written before me, and on heavenly tablets the divisions of days is ordained, lest they forget the feasts of the covenant, and walk according to the feasts of the Gentiles after their error and after their ignorance. Okay, so now let's find out what this error is. How do they get this error? For, listen here in the pink guys, for there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon. Okay. Yurek. Not Hodesh. How it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year. Ten days too soon. As in it has a 354 day cycle. Not a 364 day cycle. For this reason the years will come upon them which they will disturb the order. And make an abominable day. Uh, the day of testimony. And an unclean day a feast day. And they will go confound and they will confound all the days, and all the holy with the unclean, and all the unclean with the holy. For they will go wrong as to the months, Sabbaths, and feasts, and jubilees. For this reason I command and testify to thee, that thou mayest testify to them. And for thy children after them will disturb them, so that they will not make the year 364 days only. And for this reason, they will go wrong as to the new months and seasons and Sabbaths and festivals, and they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. This happened, okay? And not only is it in Judaism, okay, the northern kingdom of Israel is completely not even close to using this calendar, whoever they might be, okay? Because I don't see this calendar really anywhere. So, um, now that we've established, okay, that you can't go off the Hillel Jewish calendar, the lunar calendar, Okay, you have to use the Zadok Priest solar calendar, which was found in Qumran. My, and on my channel, one of my works since I've come to understand the true calendar has been to reconcile biblical events on this calendar. For instance, I'm going to talk about it later, uh, but Yeshua, he didn't die on Passover. He died on the first day of unleavened bread, and he didn't rise on first fruits. And actually, I just, the Ruach just showed me this a week and a half ago uh, with my children, hallelujah, um, that he met Thomas on the day of first fruits. And that's when Thomas put his hand in his side and put his, and touched his hands. So that's when, that was the fulfillment of first fruits wave sheath offering is when he met with the disciples and thomas okay and i'll be proving that out guys if anyone's interested so yom true is only a one day feast right why in pharisaic judaism modern judaism why is it a two-day festival because here in torah okay numbers 29 and in the seventh month on the first day of the month Ye shall have a holy convocation, and ye shall do no servile work. It is a day of blowing the trumpets unto you. Okay, what day? The first day, not two-day event. It never says it could be one or two days. And the word here for month is Kodesh. It doesn't say, and in the seventh moon, on the first day of the moon. It doesn't say that at all. It was the word, that would be Yurek. It's using the word Kodesh which comes from Kadash, which is a renewing cycle, which means we know that the months are 30-day months through the scriptures, 
There's 30 days per month, okay? And what happens is, is that every 30 days, you restart your cycle. And that's how you get the renewing application of the word Kadash. And I, I've talked about that before in my other videos. Leviticus 25, 23 to 25, and, and Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Okay, when you see this, guys, here in Leviticus 23, this is uh, what the Ruach showed me while I was here. Hallelujah. I'll praise to Yah. And I've been able to share with many of you guys out there, all the trollers and haters out there that scoff and mock, this is just proof of me rightly dividing the word by the Yahweh's by the spirit of truth okay the spirit of yeshua all right and so uh when you see this when you open up leviticus 23 when you see these words here it divides the feasts together so passover and unleavened bread are together and then it says and yahweh speak unto moses saying speak unto the children of israel and then it and it gives us the wave sheep authoring and then 50 days later is shavuot and then it says, and Yahweh speak unto Moses, saying, speak unto the children of Israel. And then it, and then it gives us trumpets, Yom Teruah. Then it says it again, Yahweh speak unto Moses, speak unto the children of Israel. Then it gives us Yom Kippur. And then after it's after he gives us the instruction for Yom Kippur, it says again, the last time, and Yahweh speak unto Moses, speak unto the children of Israel. Then it gives us Sukkot. And then it gives us the eighth day. And as you know, the eighth, the, ad, the addition day is part of Sukkot. But it's not Sukkot, but it's in that same festival cycle or set. And so that's how it's divided by these words here. So go, if you guys want to pause, read Leviticus 23, and you can take that out. And again, I didn't read this from a book. This is what the Ruach showed me as I've been investigating these matters into his calendar and his times and his seasons. Okay? So all praise to Yah. Hallelujah. And saying, in the seventh month, in the first day of the month, and that word is Hodesh here again. Shall, shall you have a Sabbath, a memorial, a blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. And so the rabbinic interpretation of Yom Teruah, which they give a title called Rosh Hashanah, uh, being two days long, violates the Torah. Because that's how they celebrate it. It's always two days. Okay, I'm here in Israel. I've seen it with my own eyes. They don't wait for the moon to celebrate it. They're celebrating it, and then they're celebrating it and moon comes on one of the days they're celebrating. Rosh Hashanah is one of several names uh, used by Judaism for this title of this holiday is not found in the Torah or in the Tanakh regarding Rosh Hashanah. But I want to say and share with you guys, four days ago I was reading through the Dead Sea Scrolls and in the writings, I believe it was the Temple Scroll, okay, there is a uh, second calendar cycle going on. And they mention that it talks about the end of the 364th day. And then it, and that means that, and it calls it the end of the year. And so the first day of the seventh month is the head of a year. Okay, I suspect this to be the kingly calendar cycle. Some people have called it the civil calendar cycle. I'd, look, I'd like to see some sort of documentation for this. If anybody has anything, please leave a comment on this. I've not found the words Rosh Hashanah except for one time translated into the English. And that was translated by Ken Johnson in his translation of Gad the Seer. I like some of the, the work that Ken's done, um, but in his book of Gad the Seer, Ken covers the name of Yahweh. Also, Ken Johnson is a pastor of a Calvary Chapel church and uh, Calvary Chapel Church system is a false system. I know this because I attended Costa Mesa for several years. It's a false church system. Knowledge and action are two different things. Okay? So, as I proved, Yom Trua and Rosh Hashanah isn't based on the new moon sighting uh, because Yah Yahweh's calendar is solar. Uh, another name in Judaism that they use for the holiday of this t holiday time of year is Yom Hazakoran which means a day of remembrance. And the fact that they group Rosh Hashanah, Yom Teruah, and Yom Hazakaran together into a two-day period forming a fungible holiday. A fungible holiday, guys, is like if we all had, if we were sitting at a table and everybody put a quarter in to the pot and everybody wanted to take a quarter out, you're not going to just, if you take out just any old quarter, you now created a fungible pile uh, of quarters. So you're not getting out the same one that you put on deposit and took it out. So what they're doing is they're forming a fungible holiday. 
and not and not a distinctly a distinctly individual name identifying each day set apart and this to me is a huge red flag and this is more proof that their calendar is a counterfeit according to the count, calendar of the righteous Zadok priests the Zedekim and in light of the Ruach it's a bad counterfeit because all I've been seeing ever since I've came to this understanding and many of you have been on the same journey with me on my channel is the Ruach just exposing and exposing exposing these false calendars on the on the Zadok priest Enoch solar calendar Yom Teruah is back to back with a day of remembrance so it can appear to be a two-day event but it's not each each day is its own distinct holy Kodesh set apart day not a fungible two-day holiday this is the error and leaven of Pharisees that has come into the Messianic faith and prophetic Christian groups and other people who've adopted it some people ignorantly some people they're not of the truth and they have ulterior purposes to having on to it I used to believe there's a festival that we don't know the date or the hour but Yahweh he, he's not an Elohim of confusion okay he has his time clock and he's made sure that man can know his days and that's what leaven does it continues to grow and grow and grow to you all out there who have the lunar clock you should keep looking into this and my challenge is will you come out of the air of this calendar as I did so here we have my biblical anniversary spreadsheet on Elohim's Zadok priest Qumran Enoch solar calendar I made a couple of alterations real quick I thought that the festival of new oil was six days long and then the festival was wood was here I re looked I reread the text several times about four days ago and I came to the conclusion I believe and I feel a lot more comfortable but that the festival oil is a part of of the uh, Shavuot Pentecad, the 50-day festivals. So it would be one day, and then on that same day starts the offering of wood per tribe. And it's a six-day event, and then you have three days. And here, this is the second day of remembrance, I believe. There's four days of remembrance every year in this calendar. They're like a 31st day or an extra day at the end of every quarter, every three months. And on this day, uh, we're going to go over some of these things. Dead Sea Scroll 4Q394-3-7I is where it talks about um, this day uh, being the 364th day of the year and the end of the calendar, which means that this is the beginning of this new calendar, but it's not, but it's a different calendar. It's a kingly calendar or a civil calendar. Guys, please help. Okay? I appreciate that looking forward to the comments but on this day Jacob sent his father and mother food and meat and drink and milk and butter and cheese and some dates of the valley four times a year he did this he took care of his parents he honored his parents so this is like a parents day you know in the United States we have uh, Mother's Day and Father's Day so this is parents day so this is the day that you're looking after your parents your grandparents not just one time a year for each split four times a year for both of them and he looked after them four times a year and sent them provisions hey, that's a nice way to show your love when we do those type of things so Yahweh's calendar is always going to be better than anything that a Satan can imitate hallelujah and then we have Yom Teruah we're going to get into the events of Yom Teruah in a few moments so now that we've established Yahweh's Yom Teruah is on the Jewish Hallel Yom Kippur, they're on the same day, September 19th, 2018, just as Yeshua did not die on the Passover, I mentioned this, rather he died on the first day of unleavened bread, but if you read the text, it was the preparation day for the Passover of the Jews, which means that it was the day of the Passover for the Pharisees at the time. It appears that there, at that time, the calendar difference on that particular year was a half day different which means and that's only the difference of the day starting at sunrise which is biblical and which has been proven on my calendar where I shared you the channel that proved it out that gave me that information it's an amazing series you guys should watch that series I'll put a link for that in the description and then also sunsets which is false the mercies are new every morning wouldn't you want your mercies new every every day when the day starts yes and for everybody out there saying oh look at Genesis no Elohim worked during the daytime then came evening which when you, is when you would rest and then came a morning which is the time before the sun rises 
it's called Boker, and that was the day one. And then the same thing, two, three, four, five, six, and then we all know he took the Sabbath and set the Sabbath so man can have rest and worship our Creator. And, and please note, Passover isn't a day. It's rather a meal, and that meal starts the Festival of Unleavened Bread. And I fully explain this in my Passover and Unleavened Bread on Enoch calendar video. And what happens is you're not allowed to eat leavened bread with that meal, and you're not allowed to eat unleavened bread for seven days. So you would start there, and it brings you to the seventh day of the festival at sunset. So after sunset, I believe on the seventh day of Feast of Unleavened Bread, you're allowed to eat leavened bread. We, and take a look at the video, okay? Um, please get interested in these. I, I hope you're, you'll be super edified. So Yom Trua or Yom Kippur or both is what this slide is called. Over the years, Christian and Messianic Bible scholars and researchers have debated the day of Yeshua's return based on the different descriptions of the feasts associated with his return. One camp has argued Yom Trua, while the other camp holds that his feet will touch down on the Mount of Olives on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. I have previously hypothesized the beginning of sorrows would precede the 70th week by one month or less, but now I'm starting to understand it might happen on the first day of the Day of Yahweh, which is a seven-year period. So I'm going to now, you we're going to read Joel chapters 1 and 2, which is the start of the Day of Yahweh. And while we go through, we can see shadows of both Yom Teruah trumpets and Yom Kippur uh, fasting. But Yom Kippur a little bit more so because we all know the horns, the trumpets are blown on all this on all the Sabbaths. Um, also notice the grain, wine, and oil, the Pentecad festivals, the Shavuot 50-day counting festivals that we have talked about on this channel. So I'm going to read Joel chapter 1 and 2. And, and we'll see what's in it. Okay, so here we are, Joel chapter 1, guys. We're going to get into this. So, it starts off with the invasion of locusts. And as soon as I, I, I heard about this, all I could think about is Ezekiel 38, 39, I believe. All right? The word of, a word of Yahweh came unto Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath uh, this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers tell your tell ye your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation that which the palmer worm hath left the locust has eaten and that which the locust hath left the canker worm hath eaten and that which the canker worm hath left the caliper has eaten awake ye drunkards we saw that right the drunkards of uh, ephraim uh, and um i want to say uh Jeremiah 50, 49, somewhere in there. And weep, and how, ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine. Remember the festival of new wine? So we're at this time, for it is cut off from your mouth. Okay, so new wine has just started almost 55 days ago. For a nation is come upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion. A lion, remember, uh, Bashar al-Assad, his last name, al-Assad, is lion and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion and he laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree and he hath made it clean bare and cast it away and the branches thereof and may are made white a call to mourning here now we have a call to mourning okay and when do you mourn on yom kippur all right Lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for her the youth of her husband again sackcloth used on yom kippur the meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of Yahweh. So we see the priests and Yahweh's ministers mourn. The field is wasted and the land mourneth. The corn is wasted. The new wine is dried up. The oil languisheth. Be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen, how ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley. So we, um, because the, the harvest of the field is perisheth. So right now we had grain, which is Shavuot. Then 50 days later, we have the Festival of New Wine. 50 days later, we have the Festival of New Oil. But now it's saying the barley, the wheat and barley, the harvest of the field is perished. Well, you're going to say, well, that's the spring. No, there's two harvests for the barley and the wheat. Uh, there's spring, and then there's a fall and winter harvest. The fall barley harvest is coming up here, I think. Well, in, the, in California, which is about the same 
climate and latitude as Israel. You can find very similar climates in California. And that happens at the end of September up into early October. I haven't been outside really of Jerusalem where a lot of this stuff is grown. So we're in the timing for this thing to happen here. And then you have the winter wheat, which is later, a later crop. But they're, they're destroyed, okay? They perished. The vine is dried up and the fig tree languisheth. The fig tree has one more, at least one more crop this year, okay? The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, the apple tree. Even all the trees of the field are all withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. And we see this word joy. What's this word joy? Joy withered away, okay? All the festivals of Yahweh are supposed to be joyful, even Yom Kippur. And I explained how the feast starts at evening on the on the ninth and goes to the evening. The fast starts on the evening of the ninth and goes to the evening of the tenth. And then at tenth at sundown, okay, that's when you can have a meal together and eat and have a joyous time. Okay, your your morning has been turned into joy. That happens on Yom Kippur. That's how it's supposed to be. Excuse me, that's not how it happens now. Not in not in Judaism. Okay, but that's how that's the proper way. If you look at it, I did a video on it. You can read it for yourself. But that, if you look at Leviticus 23, um, and I forget where else it appears, that's exactly how it's supposed to be celebrated. Okay, uh, gird yourself and lament. Uh, how ye priests, ye ministers of the altar. Lie all night in sackcloth. Like I just said, you start fasting at sunset, you're in sackcloth, and you go all the way to sunset. Okay, ye ministers of my Elohim. For the meat offering and the drink offering is withholden from the house of your Elohim. Sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of Yahweh, your Elohim, and cry unto Yahweh. Now, it doesn't say in the scriptures to put on sackcloth, but if you're going to afflict your, your body, that you would wear sackcloth for this event, for that fast. Alas for the day, for the day of Yahweh is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty it shall come. Is not the meat cut off before our eyes, yea, joy and gladness from the house of our Elohim? The seed is rotten un, unto their clods, the garners are laid desolate, the barns are broken down, the corn is withered how do the beasts groan the herds and cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture yea the flocks of of sheep are made desolate O yahweh to thee i will cry for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wild wilderness and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field the beasts of the field cry also unto thee for the rivers of the waters are dried up and the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness so now we have Joel chapter 2 here, and again, it's the army of locusts in part 2. starts off again, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahweh cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and strong, there hath never been the like. Neither shall there be any more after it, even to the many years of the many generations. A fire hath devoured before them, and a flame that burneth the land is like the garden, as the garden of Eden before them, which is it is now, right? It's a very fruitful land. And behind them a desolate wilderness. Desolation. If you have ever seen what's going on in Syria, it's completely desolate. Assad has desolated its own country, just like the destroyer, which the anti- the person that we call the anti-Messiah, the son of perdition, the Syrian, is named after. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as the horsemen, so uh, shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the top of the mountains, they shall leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall... Uh, be much pain. All their faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb like uh, the wall, like men of war. They shall march like everyone on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city, and they shall run upon the wall. Okay, right here behind me. And they shall climb upon the houses, like here. And they shall enter in through the windows like a thief. 
and the earth shall quake before them, the heavens it shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall, shall withdraw their shining. And Yahweh shall utter his voice before his army. Okay, this is Yahweh's army now that we see. Okay, a lot of people have been calling this uh, Yahweh's army the 144. David's army was 288, 288,000, 288,000 in David's army. I heard that from somebody. I don't know who exactly it is, but 288 for that. And so Yahweh's going to call him with his, utter his voice. So now here we see the trumpet of Yahweh before his army. For his camp is very great, and he is strong that ethic executeth his word. For, for the day of Yahweh is great and very trouble, and who can abide with it? So now, guys, we see, um, you know, he's calling his army, and you would blow the horn, you know, in, in days of war, you know, in war. Therefore, also now, saith Yahweh, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and mourning. Yom Kippur. And rend your heart, not your garments, all right? Not an outward thing, but an inward thing. And turn unto Yahweh your Elohim, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of, e of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent, and leave behind him even a meat offering and a drink offering unto Yahweh your Elohim. So guys, this right here is actually reminding me of Ezekiel 38, 39. He comes in, everybody, a lot of Bible commenters are, have always said that, you know, there's going to be this miraculous saving here, you know, for the people of Israel. And it's interesting because in chapter 1 we had the, link, the, the meat offering and the drink offering that was there. Now we have a, a meat and drink offering here. This is kind of interesting, okay? Um, almost, you know, the way that Elohim has you know, hidden his word, right? Like shuffled his word through, you know, what's going to happen. He's shuffled it in, you know, like a deck of cards and shuffled it and shuffled it and shuffled it. And, you know, there's no parlor tricks that can, you know, uh, discern his word. Only the Ruach will lead you us into the truth. Okay. And having him teach us, not just listen to what man says. So we test everything, guys. All right. Seek Yahweh. Who knows if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, a meat offering and a drink offering unto Yahweh your Elohim. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. So now that I'm making this video, it's looking a lot more like Yom Kippur, right? But we're looking at Yom Trua still. Okay, let's not get our eyes off that. We're This is a process of elimination. And we're going to keep watching and seeking him on a daily basis. And even if this doesn't happen, we'll go back and recalibrate. But we saw the September 23rd sign. And so it just looks looks right, right? Um, gather the people, say, okay, uh, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast, let the bride go, for, go forth from his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Hallelujah. So we see the bride going out of her closet. We see the bridegroom going out of his chamber and the bride going out of her closet. So, uh, you know, um, both of these... Being in a closet, maybe that uh, we'll have to take a look at that word. Okay, in the English, you would think that a closet is a hiding place, and the chamber is also a hiding place. Um, Elohim, you know, he's an invisible Elohim, can't be seen, but he comes out and he appears, right, as the angel of Yahweh. Um, uh, uh, and also the dead that are, they're hidden, right? They're in the earth. Okay, let's. So uh, maybe that's. What we have going on here let the priests the ministers of yahweh weep uh, bitter between the porch and the altar and let them say spare thy people o yahweh and give not thy heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them wherefore should they say among the people where is their elohim all right so guys this is something to just consider um you know i don't think all of this is in chronological order again to joel chapter 2 but some very serious things more so pointing to Yom Kippur, but is that Yom Kippur their Yom Kippur? Uh, is that how they will see it? Is it really the true Yom Trua? That's what I'm leaving you guys with regarding this. And we'll take a look at some more things regarding the real Yom Trua. So back to Yom Trua, okay, the first day of the seventh month. Here is the blow up of my biblical anniversary spreadsheet. We're going to go over because there are some many significant things, as you can see. Is Yom Kippur 2018, 
during the first day of the seventh month, this is when Noah gathered grapes in the seventh month and made wine. First day of the seventh month, I, I told you Dead Sea Scroll I found just recently four days ago that the day prior is the 364th day, the end of the year, meaning that this is the beginning of this kingly or civil calendar cycle. The mouths of the abyss of the earth were opened and the water began to descend from the flood. That's according to Jubilees chapter 5. And a lot of these feasts are tied to things that the uh, patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did. We'll find them in Jubilees. And that was the sixth most copy scroll found at Qumran of the Dead Sea Scrolls, where the righteous Zadok priests were. Abram at the time, his name was Abram at the time, was going to seek the stars. So he was going to do what all everybody you know in the world does uh, for the future reign that year. But he repented and declared, My El, my El Elyon, which is Most High El. Thou art alone are my El. And then Yahweh made promises to Abraham. And that's it, okay, that's in Jubilees 12, 16 through 31. There's going to be a link for this spreadsheet. Jacob, he returned to where he slept when he saw the ladder in, in Bethel and set up a pillar. And he invited his father and mother to a to the sacrifice so he made a sacrifice there okay the sacrifice is a festival you kill the animal you cook the animal you eat the animal Nephtali uh, was in good health and made a feast this day for his sons uh, Nephtali was the son of Jacob Israel he made food and wine and then after he had that he told his sons next morning that he was feeling ill and he was gonna die but they didn't believe him and then Naphtali gave his life testimony to his sons, and in it he shared two dreams slash visions he had pertaining to the end regarding his sons and Israel. Some very a very significant prophecy. I'll leave you a link where you could read this. This is in the Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs. Naphtali and Levi were both found in Qumran among the Dead Sea Scrolls. The other ones weren't found among them. I've read half of them. I think that they're good, and I, I, I strongly recommend that reading. Now we have, also, we have Gad the Seer. And I was going to read this before I put this presentation together, but I've been building this presentation for like five days. So sorry, I just ran out of time here and I forgot. Gad the Seer received a vision from Yahweh, and he was upon the Gihon Spring. Way back here, you go over and over, he was on the Gihon Spring. And Gihon springs at the bottom of the valley, and he looked up. And the vision consisted of the appearance of Elohim, the heavenly vision. And it was like Ezekiel's wheel, I believe, kind of. The insight of a yearly heavenly judgment on humans. So this is kind of where you get that ten days of judgment from. You're getting it from the book of Gad the seer. And there, there was a cry on this day of an angel, uh, like a ram's horn, and a blessing of the people who knew uh, the joyful shout and walk in the light of Yahweh's countenance and a vision of deliverance by Yahweh of Israel by Yahweh on this day so the the, the, the vision of deliverance it could be the final 70th the, the after the 70th week deliverance but it also could be deliverance of what appears to be this Gog Magog evasion that looks like or this war that's going to happen with Syria that could happen at the beginning of it and there is a, sh a joyful shout and deliverance and the, the cry of an angel like a ram's horn it, these all these things happen in the book of gad the seer i will leave a link to a pdf that i found and it's and and you guys can check a look take a look at that as well i have question marks here it doesn't say it specifically but solomon was anointed and made king of israel united kingdom of israel over the gihon spring and it said to blow the trumpets. So they put the crown on him, blow the trumpets, put him on, put, give him his robe, put him on David's uh, donkey, and take him down to the Gihon. And then they anointed him, and they blew the trumpets, and they said, Long live the king. So this is when I would imagine that Yeshua would come back and him become coronated king over not just Israel, but over his creation. Burnt sacrifices uh, restarted towards the end of the Babylonian captivity. So burnt sacrifices restarted at towards the end of the Babylonian captivity on the first day of the seventh month. So this is in Ezra. And then Ezra brought, brought back the law um, after the Babylonian captivity. Okay, and remember that uh, in tribulation in the 70th, in that 70th week, 
Everyone now that is dying, they have the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach, and they keep the commandments of Elohim. It's mitzvah, okay, the Ten Commandments. And this is what Yeshua kept, and this is what he lived out. He taught us how to love Elohim with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and how to love our neighbor as ourselves. Those are the Ten, and keeping the Sabbath is of the ones pertaining to how we love Elohim, people. Keeping the Seventh-day Sabbath. To clarify, you're only saved by faith. You're only justified by faith. Faith of what? Trusting in the blood uh, and the work of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah. That's it. His, his sacrifice. You are only justified by trusting in that. Yeshua taught, he who has been forgiven much, loves much. Okay, so that's one concept of his teaching, of our teacher, of our rabbi. He said, if you've been forgiven much, you love much. Okay, forgiven of what? Forgiven of our sin, breaking his commandments. He also said, he instructed, now this wasn't a teaching, this was Yeshua's instruction. He instructed us, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Which commandments? The Ten Commandments, plus the one commandment to love our brethren, those who have the same faith as we have. You don't keep the commandments to be saved, you keep the commandments because you are saved. And um, we are. you can't keep the commandments if you're a slave to sin. And who all out there has been a slave to sin? We all have. Maybe some of you that are listening to this still are saved to sin. And when Yeshua said, when, we, when the sun sets you free, we are free indeed. Now we are free from our sin. Our sin was we, before we were breaking the commandments. Now we're free to go out and keep them. So we're free, we, there's freedom in, in Yeshua to go out and keep the Sabbath. Now it's a freedom to go out and to not have these, these thoughts. Right? We can hold our thoughts captive in Yeshua the Messiah. And also, it doesn't mean that we're not going to sin anymore. Paul wrote that there's a war going on between the Ruach that we receive when we believe and our flesh. And it's always going ahead. He said, I do what I don't want to do and I don't do what I want to do. You know, who could save me from this wretched body? This is what Paul wrote about. Okay, so it says also, he who says he has no sin is a liar and the truth is not in him. We all have our sin. We all still sin, but we have an advocate. Hallelujah. Yeshua, the Messiah that we can go to. And when we confess our sin unto him, he's faithful just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And when do we do that? during our prayer time with him. And how many times should we pray a day? Daniel, who was a righteous man, prayed three times, at least two times, sunrise and sunset. And the third time, I believe I would recommend, would be at solar noon, when the sun is directly above uh, your head. And you're not praying to the sun. This is not sun worship. You pray toward Jerusalem. And you can find out more information about prayer postures. There's various prayer postures for whatever you feel is necessary and the Ruach is leading you at the time. But there's about three or four different prayer postures, I believe. One, I believe, is on your knees, palms up, head down. Another one, I believe, is possibly how the Muslims do it, on their knees with their face to the ground with their palms up rather than the palms down like the Muslims do it. A third one, I believe, is standing up possibly with your palms up looking up into the heavens towards jerusalem and the last one is remember david right remember david he committed that grave sin and he laid on the flat on his face spread out on the floor and made prayer to yahweh so there there are several more important anniversaries and things that i've seen regarding yahweh's true yom kippur and that doesn't happen until like September 28th. I'm going to be leaving that out of my video for now. And I'll be, Yahweh willing, I'll be making a Yom Kippur video. But the following is what the Ruach pointed out to me two weeks ago while reading to my children in John chapter 16. Before I read through you John chapter 16, I want you to be aware of my video. 100% proof of the pre sorrows travail, resurrection, rapture. In it, I prove from Revelation 12, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 5, the Gospels and the Tanakh. That the woman delivers the man child before she travails. I used to lean uh, the beginning of sorrows would happen prior to the 70th week. Now, if the 70th week doesn't start now, it still could, but I'm kind of leaning that the travails and sorrows happens on the first day of Daniel's 70th week, period. Kind of like what we just read in Joel. But I'm going to bring you guys through John 16. This could also be applied to the real Yom Kippur, but it might be a dual fulfillment of what appears to be a Yom Kippur to so many people 
but really it's the first day of the seventh month, the real Yom Teruah, which is kind of makes sense when a seven year period would start. On the beginning of a new year cycle, whether it be the kingly year cycle, the civil year cycle, but what we call Rosh Hashanah. So let's go ahead and go through John 16. This is Yeshua's warning about being uh, delivered up to the synagogues. This is the, the Ruach being promised. And what he says here at the end to his disciples, he's saying how he's going away. And he says that a little while and you shall not see me. And again, a little while and you shall see me because I go to the Father. So Yeshua was going to uh, the Father here. Then said some of the, his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us? A little while, and you shall not see me. And again, a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, What is this that he saith? A little while. We cannot tell what he says. Now Yeshua knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of what I said? A little while, and you shall not see me again. And, a little, and again, a little while, and you shall see me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she delivered of the child, she remembereth no more for the anguish. For joy of a man is born into the world. And ye now, now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man shall take from you. So the, when I was reading this, this popped out, because the Ruach has inspired me to develop this pre-travail, pre-sorrows, resurrection rapture doctrine. And we know this, that somewhere in Isaiah, I have it in that, in that video, that you need to watch, 100% proof of a pre-sorrows, pre-travail, rapture, resurrection video. It says that before she travails, she gives birth. So what we have now is weeping and lamenting. When will you weep and lament, right? When you afflict your soul for your sin, you think about all the, all the things that you have done. It's a time of repentance, right? That happens on Yom. And again, I explained how that day is the day that sorrow is turned into joy. When you understand how to properly keep the feast correctly, you first understand that the day starts at sunrise. Okay, and then it says on the tenth day, this is your day that you your Sabbath day off, so there's no work on the tenth day during the daytime or during the nighttime of the tenth day. But it says to start your fast at sunset the day before. Well, that's on the ninth. So the fast is just one day from sunset on the 9th to sunset on the 10th. And I think then, then, then there's rejoicing. Okay, so it's like a 24-hour fast and then there's rejoicing. That's how I understand the fast to be. It might stop at, sun, at breakfast. The fast might be over, but I, I, I don't think that's the case. We'll take a look at it. Maybe it might only be like a 12-hour fast that night. Okay, you're in sackcloth, just like we read about in Joel. Okay, during the night. So we'll go ahead and take a look at it, okay? Um, but this is definitely Yom Kippur that he's talking about here. Now, is it the real Yom Kippur? Or is this the Hillel calendar, modern Pharisee Judaism, Yom Kippur? That's the question that's out there. Like a dual fulfillment. So um, he says, hey, I'm going to go away and then I'll come back. But it's, this is all the types that are in this area right here of the disciples' grief turned to joy. You want to know when, when there's going to be a joyous situation? when the resurrection happens, right? Because all of the Yeshua's disciples, they died after him. Now their spirits might be in the presence of Elohim, but they don't have their glorified bodies yet like he had, okay? He got his glorified body, but all of his disciples have yet to have that joy of getting it, putting on a brand new body, right? Brand new, fresh clothes that they can have that's going to be incorruptible. Corruptible, putting on incorruptible there's not going to be another joyous part than that. We are made to indwell in bodies. Okay, this is how we are. We're not made like angels. We're made, we're humans. Okay, and we have, now have the Ruach indwelling in us, but we're in this flesh, this flesh that sins, this flesh that we're in this constant war. So we see sorrow being turned into joy. That happens on Yom Kippur. And when sorrow is really turned into joy, it's going to happen when we, on the resurrection, 
and the rapture. And we know a woman in travail, he just tied the woman in travail with Yom Kippur. So if this matches up with my pre-travail video that I did, then that would mean that the, the tribulation, or at least the resurrection, would happen on Yom Kippur. Isaiah 61, uh, verse 1 to 3, I've mentioned it before, but this is when Yeshua, uh, which a lot of people believe, and I do too, believe on Yom Kippur, was in the synagogue, and he was in Nazareth, and he got up to take the scroll, and he read Isaiah 61, verses 1 through th to, th to 3, but he stopped halfway through verse 2, and when he stopped, uh, he left out the day of vengeance of our Elohim. Does the day of Yahweh's vengeance? It appears to me it's going to start on Yom Kippur. Now, is it is Yom Kippur the mid-position of it, or is it the seven-year period is the day of vengeance? If you have some information on that, guys, or can support the day of vengeance being seven years, not just three and a half, please send it to me. I'm leaning that it's a seven-year period. His day of vengeance is a seven-year period that's finalized with the last day being the great and dreadful day of Yahweh. And the last three and a half years being the great tribulation. So please, hopefully uh, we have some stuff to look for on this real Yom Teruah slash pseudo Yom Kippur day coming up. So it appears like that to most Judaism, but really, it's really the first day of the seventh month. And people don't have the calendar. But remember, Elijah is coming, or the one that's going to receive the double portion spirit of Elijah. He's supposed to come before this period, right? And his ministry is going to restore all things. And I think bringing back the times and the seasons will be one of them. Bringing back the Ten Commandments is going to be another one of them. Also, Elijah, I believe, is probably going to identify who the lost tribes of Israel are, who is modern Judah, who are the converts, as mentioned in Isaiah chapter 3. It's very interesting. Isaiah chapter 3 talks about Jerusalem and the converts that are among Jerusalem. They're going to see this, this, this woe going on. Ezekiel, he ate the large, the great scroll, which was the book of Isaiah. It's the book of woes, I should say. And John ate the little scroll. Some people said that that could have been Obadiah. We don't know. Um, maybe it was it another little scroll that somewhere that we don't know about. Also, the two witnesses, John and Daniel, uh, those are who I believe will also might restore the times and seasons. Uh, for sure they're going to know the times and seasons. Both of these men were prophets, and, both, and Daniel was had all this wisdom and understanding regarding the times and the seasons. And both these men, they know the times and the seasons. So this is a video that I did on the calendar. So I'll be updating this. I used to say that I, I thought that it was going to start on the first day of the seventh month. Originally, way back when, I thought it was going to start on uh, the first day of the first month. Now, the first day of the seventh month, and it makes sense. Um, but it also could be the tenth, which is Yom Kippur, or the fifteenth, which is Sukkot. Not sure. And the last thing I want to share with you is, here's my timeline that I've updated. Daniel's 70th week timeline, reconciled on Elohim Zadok Priest Enoch calendar. This has been updated. We would have the start of the 70th week right here, the pre-travail resurrection rapture, the start of a war. You know, the two witnesses would start their ministry on the first day of the seventh month. And then they would go 1,260 days. It's 42 biblical months, three and a half years. And then they would die on the spring equinox, which is the day of the second day of remembrance, March 20th, 2022. The following day would be the beginning of the great tribulation begins the flight into the wilderness but maybe we have a, our, our understanding of flight into the wilderness is incorrect it's also the first day of the first month it's march 21st 2022 three and a half days later the two witnesses will resurrect they will resurrect on the fourth day of the first month at sunrise uh, march 24th 2022 this is a sabbath guys so the re they will resurrect on the sabbath and then this little red bar would be 1,290 days from the beginning of the start of the sacrifice here to here. And this bar is the 1,335th day. Remember it says in Daniel, blessed is he who makes it to 1,335 days. Well, if you start here on Elohim's Zadok priest, it's Enoch's solar calendar. On the first day of the seventh month and you add 1,335 days, it perfectly lands up on Shavuot. So there's a blessing if you make it to Shavuot, if the, if, if the counting starts here. And then the last day what we have here is the great and dreadful day of Yahweh. It starts on, it would actually start on the second day of remembrance. And then it would, all, and it would flow into, which is September 17th, or September 18th. And then it would end sometime on Yom Teruah, 
um, September 19th, 2025. And that's when Yeshua would be anointed king because that's when Solomon was made king. Right over here over the Gihon, way over here behind me, over the Gihon, guys. Um, and so I would imagine that's where Yeshua would come back. He's, the final battle is right there, and then he would be made king right there. The Gihon would be flushing fast, so maybe all that blood would be taken out to sea if that's what's going on at that time, which I think that's how I understand it to be, if that, our understanding is right. So I'm signing off now from Jerusalem. We have another watch. I love you all, brothers and sisters, in Yeshua HaMashiach. I'm looking forward to your comments, and shalom.